And I, I was concerned that these looked like nipples. <laughs> Today we're going to head over to Nathan Wright's. Now he makes truly exceptional guitars, hand-built guitars, really specifically um, aware of details. Now I've only played one, so I should say that. I can't say blanket. I can say the one that I have is freaking amazing. Here's a picture of it. Now, okay, so we're going to head from Nashville. It's about an hour and a half, way out into the middle of nowhere, into McMinnville. So let's pack up. Let's go. It's a cold, crispy day, and uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to meet him. I feel like he's another builder that 10 years from now, people are going to be like, can you believe people only paid $2,000 or whatever you pay, $3,000 for one of Nathan's guitars? Now they're $15,000. So let's go hang out. There's a second guitar in there. I'm taking my Showalter guitars with me so that I can show it to Nathan and I can get him to do an inlay because I left the fretboard extension open and uh, that's been the hope and dream is that Nathan would do a really cool thing. It's gonna be very cool and Nathan is the perfect guy for inlay work. of this land. Nathan, is that you? Hey, hey buddy. That's cool, right. so this is your place, huh? This is it, this is it. I've got the mess shop over here, the sawmill back over there. Oh. And then in the house here, I've got kind of the clean shop where I probably spend 90% of my time. Awesome, man. So. Cool, well, I've got two guitars I wanna show you. Yeah. So let's go grab let's those. See Showalter? Yeah. This is a happy place. <laughs> so this is where I do 90% of my work. Uh, all the glue ups, I keep the climate controlled, and I store a lot of my wood in here that needs to stay a certain you know humidity level. And uh, basically anything that's not too messy and causing sawdust it happens in this room. So I'm Nathaniel Wright. I'm in McMinnville, Tennessee. I build guitars full time. This is one that I built uh, a little over a year ago, I believe. This is kind of the overflow room where wow. I have guitars in either repairs or builds and then more storage underneath. For is this a redwood top? That is. Yeah, here we can Man, bring it to the light if you want. And walnut? I just got a quick little glimpse yeah. in the back. We can bring it in the other cool. room if you want. Yeah, let's go in there. Yeah, this one is a custom order. And just about ready to glue the bridge on. Man. And Clara Walnut, back and sides. Flamed mahogany neck, if you can catch it in the right light. Oh, I like the, the logo. Yeah, uh, Trinity. Yeah, the Trinity. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So it's actually a one-piece redwood top. One piece. Yeah. That's interesting. So okay, yeah, so the so wide grain over here. Yeah. And then really tight grain over here. So that's yeah. a big old board. Yeah, it's a little tricky to do uh, to keep everything centered with that. Okay. So you have to have certain marks underneath the fretboard and at this end. And so basically you just butt up your uh, binding joint dead center. Okay. And then, yeah, yeah, this one's been a fun build. Yeah, this. Sheesh. That's all uh, Koa. Dude, that is beautiful. Back and sides, top. It's wow. got the sound port. That's the first one I've ever done. You do that on purpose? Yeah, yeah, fortunately. <laughs> I did one not on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. And then, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then abalone trim. And that uh, I cut from Rob Lanks. Uh, I don't like to buy it pre made because it's really expensive pre made. Yeah. Have you looked at that stuff? No. It is, people are getting filthy rich off that stuff. So, but yeah. Yeah, so this is like your D35. Yeah. This is a 67. Oh, cool. And now it's had a retop. Okay. And what we've done with it is converted it to a herringbone. Basically, if, if they built this guitar in the 1930s, okay. in the golden era, we try to make this look like what a D35 would look like. So it has a uh, zipper pattern back instead of the black, white, black. 
and then so you swapped that yeah i still swapped that out ratted it out and added those still has the brazilian rosewood back and sides and dead quartered sides i mean it does wow, not get any so more quarter than that they're perfect that's why i love mine it's super inky like oh yeah on the sides yeah, yeah the sides are better than the back mm -hmm. on my the wedge is like this mm -hmm. um but i have more quartered quartered wings. across yeah they'll probably sound a little better so is it, when you say quartered you mean anything is like quarter sawn quarter sawn yeah okay yeah quarter sawn it'll just be a six string now and it's got an adirondack spruce top now cool. instead of the uh i said that they were using All right. in the 60s how much <laughs> I'll he let you ask him. <laughs> <laughs> He'll probably sell it in the end. So yeah. How do you feel about that? Have you set up a Google alert for used right Lutheran guitars? No, I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Guitar. Uh, it's the same body shape as the maple one. Okay. It looks deeper. Yeah, it might be. It might be a little deeper. Uh, so it's the Peely back and sides. Cool. And then a um, Spanish Ooh, cedar that's neck. That's a really beautiful, subtle. I love the loops. loops. That's yeah. like my favorite part of guitar design. I like a good one. Yeah. Yeah. When they're done right. Uh, it's got Man, and this top. one's so pearly and beautiful. Sorry. What, oh, you, you're good. What were we saying? Engelman. 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 And then, uh, yeah, just. Uh, and then maple binding. Yep. Maple binding. And. So this pattern's called the Tree of Life up the fretboard. I think it's originally from the Larson brothers in the 20s. I could be wrong on that, but it's, I know they built some with that pattern. With enough confidence, it can be true. It can be true, yeah, that's right. It is the yeah. Larson brothers. Yeah, exactly. Well, one guitar I wanted to show you, and be kind and gentle, gentle with me. This is the first guitar I've ever built, and mistakes were made. Well, that's, that's but half a you open it. Uh, okay. I almost opened it while you were going. <laughs> That's cool. Man, that is so yellow. It's that bad. is wild. You should use some. It's I should try yeah, I should try it. It grows some. all around here too. Yeah. Home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's my accidental sound port. I've done it too, actually. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So it happens. Yeah, so here's my here's life. my middle school at first. I had the option of like having these here or having everything down here moving those up. Mm-hmm. And I, I was concerned that these looked like nipples. <laughs> I haven't told anyone yet. Yeah. I took it out of the first video, but it's still, you know, I don't think it looks like nipples now. No. I was concerned. No, I think you'll be all right. <laughs> I've only ever played um, solid top mahogany. Mm -hmm. Like that co will be one of the only other solid tops of, of, of a hardwood. So it's it's really interesting to hear because it doesn't sound like mahogany. It's a little more bright, to, like crisp. To yeah, yeah. Me. It's very. It's got a very nice, unique sound. I like it. And but that, I'm super happy with it. That's cool, man. That. You, if you saw my first guitar, you'd be like, yeah, no, I'm pro, you're a pro. Let's be clear, my it first was Steve. <laughs> I mean, Steve is incredibly talented and patient and really generous to let me make it. But, then, yeah. but I was, I mean, it's funny, we were like 19 episodes in before we actually got to, I'll say it this way. We were like 19 episodes in before I got to anything that I had done definitively before. All of a sudden I was like, oh, I know how to I know level frets, I know how to. <laughs> Take the strings off for what are what you would need. I sent you some pictures of just the, the spot and some measurements. Yeah. So there's a symbol that I've drawn on myself since I was like 18 or 19. It's like a line, a line, an ichthus, like a Jesus fish, and then another two lines. And so with the strings running up and down, you almost get the insinuation of these two strings. I don't know if we need to act. We can start with the symbol and then figure it out. Or you can tell me. I don't mm -hmm. I don't know how this would work. You know, we might be able to find something 
in here. Mm -hmm. You know, here, let me pull some of these out. These are uh, green abalone, or some people like to say abalone. And they'll be kind of, they'll have some wild oh, yeah. effect on the back. And something like that might kind of work oh, yeah, to be just looks... a natural scaly look. Mm -hmm. It but, looks like scales. Yeah. And I could also just engrave little, you know, U's, U shapes. Oh, yeah. And then between that and the, cool. the shapes. That might do it. The only issue with these is I don't have like any giant pieces. Yeah. But you can usually kind of pair them in together because they, yeah. with all the colors, they kind of work together nicely. Yeah. That's so some, really cool. Something like that might work. Or we could just do white or gold uh, and just engrave the scales in. Okay. You know, that would be the other. You did good, man. Thank you. I didn't peek on this one either. I almost did. I started to open it. I looked yeah. a better way too. So, ooh, look at that. Man, that fire stripe is just killer too. I know. He's got some really nice material. Yeah, that was a nice set of, uh, of maple. The thing I like about maple is you really don't have to do pour filling much. I really? Mean, it, it saves you a day of you know work. Hmm. Not fooling with that stuff. Last time I played it. Really? I'm pretty, yeah. Not that I've got the best memory. It's been a while, but it's opened up. You know, when you first put the first set of strings on a guitar, and you probably noticed it with this, mm -hmm. after about 15 minutes, it's a different guitar. Yeah. Usually, you know, it really changes. So, but then, you know, six months down the road, a year down the road, it's going to continue changing as, you know, the, the wood settles, you know, the cells will settle a little bit and it's like sifting sand, you know, whatever, you know, the heaviest mm. goes to the bottom and it's kind of that way with the wood. That's the way I think of it is it's just kind of settles the wood into the best. And I'm sure the metal. structure of the fibers, you know, like a stack of spaghetti mm -hmm. is going to like slowly bend and get things to where it just adjust. holds. Yeah. Things will adjust over time. Trusting me, yeah. With the, camera. the camera's probably it's worth pretty... more than the guitar, but yeah. Every time I play this guitar, it like it just has that force field of low end on the high string. Cause it's um, you know, I have little kids, and we watch like movies like The Trolls, and there's this like. And it like sounds exactly like the record, where it's just yeah has so much low end and bass. Yeah. But, I love this guitar. Well, I'm really happy you like it. It was, it's a, it's fun. Like I made that thumbnail. I didn't ask you about the thumbnail because I think the thumbnail is like a guitar I would never own. I'm like, oh yeah. That's just to get some freaking eyeballs on it. Um, oh, no, don't worry about that. But it was like, it's a guitar I never thought like, if this was on your website, I'd look at it and be like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. And I would look for a Martini thing. Yeah. But this thing is like, I don't know. I didn't think I liked maple guitars, and this one is excellent. Yeah. Well, and that's that's the thing we kind of talked about. You know, it's just like these modern styles and, do, you know, doing things outside the box. Great guitars. Mm -hmm. Harder to sell. You know, yeah. It's just, yeah, not, yeah, you yeah. know, people really like the tradition, mm -hmm. you know, creatures of habit. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, yeah. the, the Martins and the Gibsons are great guitars and they've been around for a long time because they are great guitars. But yeah, it's, it's hard for some people to break out of that. And, you know, that's okay. They know what they like, I guess. But it, it's nice when somebody appreciates something that's just a little oddball, you know. So. That's, dude, that's where I, I feel like I resonate most with, like, I love the strange guitars, the hand-built guitars, the, the stuff that you wouldn't know you would love until you get it in your lap. Yeah. So this is number 36. Number what, 36. What's your, what are you up to now? Ooh, you want me to show you? Yeah. Okay. So I just finished number 49 and this is number 50. And this is a very special guitar 
because this is an incredibly rare set of Madagascar rosewood. You cannot find this anymore because it is very hard to get good wood out of Madagascar. It's, they call it kind of a lawless land for getting wood right now, so it's difficult. So this is an incredible set. That really is stunning. It is, and believe it or not, it is a four piece back because it's also very hard to find it mm, wide enough yeah. in this figure. Um, so it, uh, you, it took me forever to find the joint when I got this for this, you know, the outer edges, but I did do the center joint. So this is going to be a OM or since it's one of my builds, it's an OW, a orchestra right. <laughs> and I'll go ahead and pull these sides out too, because these sides are very reminiscent of Brazilian rosewood in their pattern. They've got the spider webbing. Ooh. Yeah, these sides are absolutely killer. So this is number 50, and I kind of wanted to do something special for that. Absolutely. Yeah, so this will have the 42 um, style abalone trim around the fretboard and around the top and the rosette. And I have the rosette. Actually, I'll just leave it out of the form for now. Man, I think it's going to be a murderer. It, it is going to be very cool. And a lot of people say, uh, you know, I've actually never heard one, uh, but people compare it very closely to Brazilian rosewood. Some even prefer it to Brazilian rosewood. All right. So, and is, it, is, it the, is this oh, yeah. the top? This will be the top. Uh, Adirondack red spruce with light uh, bear claw. I don't know if you can pick it up or not. Oh, that's really pretty. You can hear that really. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, you can pick it up. Yeah. What? Well, can Sorry. you tap it while I'm holding the. Let me, uh, let me see where it taps best. Uh, let's go. There we go. That, there's so much low end coming yeah. off of that. And we can do the back too. The back probably sounds pretty good. Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of fun just tapping around on these things. Yeah. It's, it's cool. That's the question that you always get is, you know, what does voicing actually mean? Which, don't tell them. Make them buy a guitar and just experience it. <laughs> yeah.